Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out the Beggar Pente, a new HG out in the Witch for Mercury line. This one looks really cool. Going to be very similar, of course, to the Beggar Boo, just we've gotten different colors and then some different weaponry and accessories and stuff. Obviously, it's got that big, cool shield and then a really cool weapon there as well. So I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, let's get into it with this very cool box art. And one thing you'll notice right off the bat, or maybe, is that there in the background, we got like kind of the same image mirrored just because you got multiple multiple units there in the background, so it looks kind of cool. Lovely effects and art for this one as always, the glowing effects and all these kind of little particles flying around, everything looks really cool for this. And like I said, I do really like that weapon as well. It's a really cool weapon design for this one. On the side of the box, you can see this is number 12 in the line. And on the bottom of the box, there is a recreation of the box art here with the painted version of the kit, fully painted and detailed. There is another cool action pose here. And like with so many of these kits, we've got some wire guide effects here for the shield to be able to go off flying on its own there and a stand which is included so that's nice we have an included stand there for that and just some really cool poses there with the shield and here's a photograph of the kit completely unpainted just straight out of the box does still look pretty nice there and on the opposite side the fully painted kit front and back right there looks great there we got some pilot information there for the pilots of Grassley House and a little bit of information there about the story. Let's go ahead and crack open the box here. We'll get to the runners in just a moment. Ooh, that's a lot of stickers on that. And first, let's just go ahead and take a look at the instruction manual here. Got that same image from the box art, minus the background, also minus the particle effects kind of flying around that we saw in the front of the box. It's just the mobile suit there without any of those added effects. Some information there like we saw on the outside of the box, but more information and all in Japanese and in English if you want to read up about the pilots. On the back side, we've got some artwork here, information about the non-kinetic shield, the beam rifle, all this information again is all in Japanese and in English. Going down here about the backpack, the beam saber, all like relatively straightforward stuff, but information if you're interested in reading up about that. We've also got the color guide over here on the side. That's all in Japanese and in English as well, if you want to refer to that for the official colors. Opening it up to the inside, there is our parts list. That's all in color, including the effect parts, the stickers and everything is all right there. And then the first couple of pages all here in color, or the first page, I should say, the first page of construction all there in color. And then the rest of the manual is all here in black and white for the rest of the construction. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of our stuff here. So here's a look at that sticker sheet. And yeah, it's a lot of stuff that I'm sure is gonna be like going in and around the shield underneath some clear parts and a few color correcting stickers here and there. It's a quite sizable sticker sheet here. One of the larger ones from the series, I would think, but these all should look pretty nice on the finished kit. We've got our black wire here, which once again is a single length of 40 centimeters there for our effect wire and then SB13 for our clear neon green beam saber effect parts for this one. Getting into the rest of the runners, we've got runner CE1 for the clear effect stand. Runner A here in this nice purple color. This is from the Beggar Boo, so it's not any new parts with this one. Same thing here for runner B, which is in this darker grayish purple for a lot of the internal joint and frame type parts. That looks quite interesting. Runner D as well, still parts here from the original Beggar Boo kit. This one is in this really dark red, really nice color for this one. And then runner E in this light clear purple is going to be our clear parts there for the kit. And then we've got runners G and H, which are gonna be our new runners specifically for this kit. Runner G has a couple parts up there in gray, purple, red, and then clear purple over here. And then H, some more of that dark grayish purple there for the frame type of parts, detail parts, mechanical parts there for the kit. So that's the end of our runners for the kit. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, guys, and here is the kit all built up. But aside from just the kit, here is the shield all built up, which I feel like is going to be probably one of the main selling points for this kit is this awesome shield. I mean, there's a reason that it's featured right front and center on the front of the box. It's a really cool shield and definitely probably its most exciting accessory. But we do have some other really cool accessories included with this one. And I think that overall, even though I like I said, I think the main focus that a lot of people are going to enjoy about this is those accessories. The main suit itself is really great. I mean, it's essentially very similar to the Beggar Bue, which we saw before. So it won't necessarily feel like anything too new, but it is a really nice new take on that, just with the d changes to the color scheme and a couple other changes around on the kit. So let's go ahead and check it out. So as for those accessories, it's not gonna come as too much of a surprise that for our hand options, these holding hands are the only things that we have included here with this kit. But we do have the beam rifle, and as I said, I do really love the design of this beam rifle. As you can see, there's a couple of stickers there and there 
for cameras on it. Otherwise, it's made in a way where it hides the seam lines as panel line details along there. So that's nice, you don't have to worry about that. The handle is movable so that this can go up over the shoulder or you can hold it kind of under the arm. I guess it's still probably gonna be a pretty tight fit to be under the arm. Over the shoulder is gonna be the way to go for this, which makes it more like a shaped and held like a bazooka, but still a beam rifle. But I really, really like the design of this one. And then of course the star of the show and it's almost kind of very star shaped as well is the non-kinetic shield. Now I did opt for the stickers showing this in active mode. Otherwise there's black stickers. If you plan on having it closed up, you're supposed to have the black stickers on there but we're gonna have this opened up so this extends out here and here and here you can see it exposes more of these stickers when you expose these sections when you pull those out of there the back side of the shield pretty nicely detailed here you do have some hollow gaps kind of at the ends of these red pieces but I think with a little bit of modification you could probably turn those into looking like kind of a little vent detail which I think could be pretty cool just that it's got like these vents kind of on the sides sticking out of those sections right there, but really cool shield. This is gonna attach onto the arm, very similar to how the uh, gauntlet parts attached onto the arms of the bigger view. And that's just held in the hand and connected on there and you can rotate that. You can kind of move that in and out for just having the arm straight on and just holding the shield straight out there like that with that connection piece, so that's really nice. Up here is where your beam saber is stored. The handle is stored anyway. You can pop that out and pull that out. And this is your beam saber handle. We have two beam saber effect parts, but you only need the one, so we only have one handle here, which is a very small, tiny little beam saber handle, but nice, clear fluorescent green there for the beam saber effect part. And then of course, the effect stand here with our wire. Now, if you guys saw my review of the Daryl Valde, I showed you guys how you can replace this wire with a gardening wire, which is gonna be more stable for actually holding it up. In this case, that's going to be a bit more difficult because the shield is a bit heavier. So if you take off the handle, that exposes that bit right there. That plugs onto your effect stand, then the opposite end of this plugs into the handle section that you just took off. So this part you keep connected to the hand and then you have your wire going to the shield flying off on its own there like that. So pretty cool design, but again, yeah, this wire is definitely not gonna be holding up anything on its own. As for the kit itself, all the rest of the stickers mostly are going to be under the clear parts here in the thighs, the shoulders, and in the head, adding some nice detail and effect underneath that clear part there in the head and on the sides of the head as well stickers there which gives you a nice mirror effect underneath the clear parts that said there is quite a few stickers here that go in these backpack sections now you can see the metallic green ones there but when you extend these out you can see that in between those metallic green sections there's also gray stickers that you need to put in between there so it's actually a gray sticker a green sticker a gray sticker a green sticker a gray sticker kind of wrapped around this entire middle section there so it's a cool detail and a cool gimmick that those parts extend out like that in the backpack but it's just gonna be all stickers in that section in between there. So if you don't mind that, then I think it's a really cool effect. As for the posability of these sections, they only rotate. You can't change the angle left or right or anything like that. They're not on ball joints, so they just rotate up, rotate down. That's about it. This middle section also rotates up, down a little bit. Other than that, everything else is gonna be exactly the same like the Begier view. This kit does have a fantastic articulation as we'll demonstrate here in just a second once we take a look at some poses, but overall that and all of the very nice detail that you have on here is going to make for a pretty solid looking kit just straight out of the box. Maybe just throwing a little bit of panel liner on there is really kind of all you would need just to bring out some of those details in there, but it's a really great looking kit. All right guys, and that should just about do it for everything that we need to go over here with this kit. Let's just try out some poses with this. It's one that you know doesn't really necessarily feel like it comes with a ton in the way of accessories. You know, you have a, your beam rifle, your beam saber, your shield, it's all relatively standard, but it does introduce some really cool, interesting new kind of twists on those things, especially with the shield here, obviously. So that's gonna be its main thing, like the main gimmick of this kit, as I've been saying kind of all along, the shield is really kind of the main thing that I feel like people are gonna focus on when they're wanting to pick up this kit. And for a good reason, it's a cool shield it's an interesting gimmick it works well uh, the connection stand for that works well as well the effect stand you know it would be nice if there was a way to put that on a wire and not have to use a stand and of course you could do that you could modify the kit uh, in a way to use a different wire or something to not have to use the effect stand I think it's definitely going to look better uh, that way if you want to go that route with it but Whatever the case may be, I think it's a cool looking kit. I really like the new color scheme for this one. It's quite a unique color scheme. That dark red and purple color scheme is one that's pretty uncommon, I think is fair to say. 
And then one cool thing that I realized that you can do as well is stick one of your beam saber effect parts into the end of the beam rifle and make it look like a beam rifle shot coming out of your rifle there, which is a pretty cool way to use your extra beam saber effect part if you wanted to use it like that. But that's about it for this review, guys. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this kit down in the comment section below. I really like this kit. I think it's a really cool design, you know, even though the base kit itself is mostly just the Baker Boo, just uh, changed in its colors. I think the new parts added, especially the accessories, the head and the backpack notably those all add plenty of value to it so even if you already have the beggar view and you're wondering if i really want to get another just basically color swapped version of that i would say definitely yeah go for it just because you know there's a lot more than just the color change with this and i think it's definitely worth picking up and these kits are all really nicely priced as well so totally affordable i think and in my opinion this kit stands on its own certainly warranted to be added to the collection even if you already have the beggar boo but if you guys are wanting to check out any of these kits for yourself or anything else from bandai or any tools or supplies or paints or all that good stuff you can check the link in the video description to USA Gundam store down below the video and they've got all that stuff there on the website for you guys to check out wait okay so for the bonus tip uh, I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the bonus tips at the end of a few of the recent reviews and I was looking at this kit thinking what can I do for this one and I was having a really hard time admittedly and that speaks to how great the kit is I think there's not really any seam lines to worry about on the kit and there's just not really too much that I could really think that would be just like a quick and simple modification to you know greatly improve the look of the kit other than the idea that we're going to go with here today and that is just the fact that there's all these little black accents that you have around on the kit which Bendai could have included as a bunch of stickers all these little bits like for the front of the shield you can see all those little parts that need to be painted in and you know it's a simple enough thing you know just get a little bit of paint and paint those in however you might like but I figure I don't normally really talk about Gundam markers because I don't really recommend them for most things except for uh, purposes like this I feel like a Gundam marker might work now I think black is probably the way to go but in this case I'm actually going to use dark gray from the Gundam uh, seed marker collection here and it's probably better actually a lot of times when you see black uh, it's not really pure black and using pure black is not always the best way to go sometimes using a dark gray or a dark navy which this is actually kind of a very dark navy gray uh, as far as what it looks like. It's usually a better bet than using just plain uh, pure black. So let me just get this mark ready because actually this is the first time I'm using this one. As you can see there from the tip, I haven't even started the paint on it yet. All right, and I'm not gonna go around the whole kit too, by the way, I should mention, but the other reason why I think using the Gundam marker in this particular tip will be a good experience for us is that I think it will help illustrate why I generally don't recommend using a Gundam marker. But all right, so let's see, I'm just gonna paint in uh, a couple of these sections here. You can see uh, just because of the shape of the tip, painting in small details like this, you're just gonna have a hard time getting the head of the marker, which is quite large, into the kind of hard to reach little areas and what you're going to end up doing is then filling that in with too much paint to try to get it into all the cracks and then it's just going to be the paint's going to be too thick and it's going to be coming out and you're going to have it looking kind of messy like that now so what i want to do for the second part of this tip is just kind of illustrate a quick and easy way to clean that up okay so after giving that a few minutes to dry and i could probably wait a few minutes more but we can probably move on the reason why you would want to wait a couple of minutes at least to let that dry is because if you start cleaning that up while the paint is still too wet you're going to end up smearing the paint more than you would like and it's just going to kind of make it that much more difficult for you so all I'm going to use is a couple of types of just small Q-tips here. Now you could just use a regular Q-tip, but again, it's the same thing like with a marker. If you use a regular Q-tip or a cotton swab, usually the end is gonna to be too big. So this is a smaller type one, and this is a really fine point one, which is generally used, you can get these like any model or supply store or anything like that. All sorts of different applications that you could find these just like really small ones, which are really good for just cleaning up really small details. But yeah, you wanna make sure that you have like a fine point so that you can get into, you know, fine spaces without having this huge cotton swab. I'm gonna be using just a lighter fuel for this. You could also use um, enamel thinner. I would maybe recommend just using lighter fluid. In my experience, this is usually kind of enough and all you need is just a little bit here on the end. And it's also helpful to have a paper towel on hand because it's kind of hard to control how much lighter fluid is coming out of there and you really only need a little bit. So if you get it a little bit too wet, I'll just usually just touch it to a paper towel just to kind of let some of that out first. Then it's just a matter of kind of carefully and you can see kind of where I drew outside the lines a bit there and you're just kind of 
rub this and you don't have to be too aggressive with it. You just need to get it wet and that'll kind of start the process of loosening the paint essentially. So just kind of get it a little bit wet and then just kind of go a little by little until your line is cleaned up. And then once you're done, it's gonna look something like that, much cleaner. Now this is one of those instances where, like I said, I don't normally recommend using Gundam markers, for, but, but for applications like this, using Gundam marker can work perfectly well for that. And then you know you can go in and do your panel lining and then you can spray top coat over it. And yes, if you're wondering, can you spray top coat over Gundam markers, will it affect it in any way? It shouldn't, so long as you're using a top coat that's just kind of a regular top coat made for uh, plastic models, shouldn't have any issues. But again, this is paint, so it does need some proper curing time. I would wait at least a few hours, let it sit overnight before you spray top coat over it, just in case to make sure the paint is uh, pretty well cured. And that said, as I mentioned earlier about waiting a, a few minutes for the paint to dry before you clean it up, I would not wait that long uh, before cleaning it up. If you wait like overnight or you wait a day or more than a day, to do your cleanup, you're gonna have a harder time uh, using this method to clean that up just because the paint is then cured much more. And just with lighter fluid or even with enamel thinner, it's gonna be, you know, tougher. You can do it, certainly, but it's gonna be tougher to get that paint off. So give it a few minutes to start to dry, but don't wait too long before you clean up. But anyway, guys, as you can see, once you then were to repeat that process and all these little dark spots on the front skirt, on the legs, on the back skirt, up on the shoulders. There's quite a lot of these like little black accents. And again, I do think that it was the right route to go with a dark gray, at least in my opinion. I think that looks better than just straight black. You could use a dark gray or a dark navy or something. I think, especially against this purple color scheme, I think that's a good color to use. But yeah, hope that tip was helpful for you guys. I know it's a pretty easy and obvious one, but if there's any of you guys that uh, did find that helpful at all, let me know, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you guys feel so inclined. I really appreciate it, you guys. Till next time, have a great day. See y'all later. Bye-bye.